Emergency Contraception There are currently three main types of emergency contraception. The copper coil, the levonorgestrel pill, marketed as Levonel in Europe and the UK, and the ulipristal acetate pill, marketed as ELA-1 in Europe and the UK. This is a selective progesterone receptor modulator, SPRM. Now, first of all, why do we use emergency contraception? So emergency contraception is indicated when a woman's routine contraception has failed. For example, she missed her pills or she had severe diarrhea. Or when unprotected sexual intercourse, UPSI in short, has occurred. UPSI doesn't always pose a pregnancy risk. So how can we figure out when there is a risk of pregnancy? So first we need to understand the following. So sperm survive for five to seven days in the upper reproductive tract, while the unfertilized ovum can survive for around 24 hours. Therefore, the highest risk of pregnancy from a single act of OPSI is within 24 hours before ovulation or the day of ovulation itself. Therefore, this means that pregnancy risk is lowest at the start and the end of the menstrual cycle. Okay, now how do we choose between the different types of emergency contraception? So let's start off by comparing their different characteristics. So looking at the dose slash device first. So the copper coil contains 280 millimeters squared of copper and ideally should have banded arms. So this means that copper is wound around the arms of the device to make it more effective. While Levonorgestrel LNG comes in a pill with a dose of 1.5 milligrams, while Ulipristal Acetate UPA is another pill which is 30 milligrams. Next, we have the indication. So the copper coil can be inserted up to five days after UPSI or after ovulation. The LNG can be used up to 72 hours after UPSI or contraception failure, while the UPA can be used up to 120 hours after UPSI or contraception failure. Now moving on to efficacy. Are they all equally effective? So the copper coil has a pregnancy rate of less than 1%, while the LNG has a pregnancy rate of 2.2% and the UPA a pregnancy rate of 1.3%. So clearly you can see here that the copper coil is the most effective form of emergency contraception. But how do they work? So what is their mode of action? The copper coil primarily inhibits fertilization as copper is toxic to both sperm and ovum but also has an anti-implantation effect on the endometrium. LNG delays ovulation by 5-7 to seven days if given before the LH surge, and UPA also delays or inhibits ovulation if given before the LH surge. So a very important point to note here is that LNG and UPA will only work if they are given before ovulation has taken place. They are ineffective if given after ovulation because essentially their role of delaying or inhibiting ovulation is futile, if that makes sense. Next up, we've got the drug interactions. So the copper coil does not interact with anything since it is an intrauterine device. Liver enzyme inducing drugs may reduce the efficacy of LNG and this effect persists for 28 days after. UPA also interacts with liver enzyme-inducing drugs and drugs which increase gastric pH, such as PPIs and antacids. UPA also interacts with progestogen-containing contraception. Therefore, these women should use extra precautions, such as condoms, for a total of 9 days after taking the UPA emergency contraception pill. Now let's take a look at the contraindications. There are very few contraindications for the copper coil, however to get a detailed understanding, best to take a look at my video on intrauterine contraception. We've got no contraindications with LNG. With UPA, the main contraindications include hypersensitivity to UPA and severe asthma uncontrolled by steroids. 
Side effects. So, for the copper coil, emergency contraception, side effects include pain during insertion. With the LNG, less than 20% of users will have nausea, headache, and altered bleeding patterns. So typically, women get their period one to two days earlier than expected. Side effects are similar with the UPA. Usually, women get their period two days later than expected, however. Now, what about prescribing emergency contraception in breastfeeding women? So there are no restrictions when it comes to the copper coil and LNG. However, UPA is detected in breast milk up to five days after ingestion. Therefore, these women are advised to express and discard breast milk for seven days after taking gulipristal acetate. Okay, so now that we've compared the three on many different levels, ultimately we can say that the copper coil is the most effective method and should be offered to all eligible women. One other thing worth noting when comparing the pills is that UPA is more expensive than LNG. So just a few more things to keep in mind. So what about if the patient has vomited after taking her emergency contraception pill? A repeat LNG dose is required if vomiting occurs within two hours, while a repeat UPA dose is required if vomiting occurs within three hours. Lastly, can we use repeat doses of emergency contraception in one cycle? So, LNG does not have any adverse pregnancy outcomes. Therefore, if further episodes of OOPSI occur, a repeat LNG dose can be given. On the other hand, there is limited data about safety in pregnancy with UPA. Therefore, a repeat dose is not advisable. I hope this was helpful. Like and subscribe.